Monica Pius here and welcome back to my channel. Now, this is going to be part two of pregnancy journey or fertility journey, however you want to call it. And the first one was kind of my journey getting here. And now I want to talk about actually being pregnant. I think that it's something that is not really discussed very much. And I think that we're just supposed to be overjoyed with happiness. And there are a lot of emotions that go in. In my last video, I spoke about how if I would not have gone through the struggles that I did, I would not understand or be as appreciative of my pregnancy journey. But even with that, I've still had my struggles. Sometimes like I'll just be in the shower and I'll look down in my belly and just be so grateful to her for choosing me to be her mommy. I just think like, wow, you know, you actually made it of all the times that we've tried all of the millions of like little sperms you made it and to me she's she's already a warrior in my in my book i admire her for that <laughs> it was not always like that and not having gone through the struggles that i did i don't think <laughs> this would be <laughs> very easy so when you get pregnant the first couple days it's the excitement of finding out and especially when you've struggled you're just in awe like in la la land and then also there's a little bit of frightening like hoping that it, it the pregnancy pulls through then once you hit five weeks at least for me it was five weeks that excitement goes downhill <laughs> you start feeling like garbage the funniest thing because i remember speaking to a friend and saying oh i feel great like i can't believe how great i feel i have no nausea i have nothing following day i wake up i have breakfast which consisted of eggs and oatmeal barely finished my eggs and i just remember just feeling so nauseous all day and i was like oh the eggs must have been bad and i remember telling my friend and she's like you do know that you're pregnant right and I'm like, yeah, but I don't think it's that. Like, cause it's been like an all day thing. And the next day I could not even think of eating eggs and I could not even think of having oatmeal. And maybe, maybe like a cracker seemed good. That was the beginning of my morning sickness or all day sickness. I believe it was around Thanksgiving. Yep, it, it wasn't that bad. Like on Thanksgiving day, it's, it's, I look forward to that day every year. And this year it was, eh, I mean, I ate, I was able to eat, but it wasn't anything crazy for me. The following day, we always get up and we go to Black Friday and I felt fine that like I was hungry. I had, I had my breakfast and that day was fine. The following day, it was not fine. I just felt nauseous all day and I just felt awful. And I was literally, and I'm going to be completely truthful for, with you and people might say what they want. But at that point, I was feeling so bad that I was like, is there a way that I can put like this baby somebody else <laughs> so that I don't have to feel this way? And mind you, this is after struggling as much as I did. I don't know what would have happened if I wouldn't have struggled. I think it, it was a little bit of depression. Two of the things that I love the most I was not doing and that to me was so weird. I love shopping. I'm a shopaholic. I didn't even want to look at my phone to shop online, let alone go to a mall. I remember my niece and my mom asked me, oh, hey, do you want to go to the mall with us? And I was like, absolutely not. No way. I'm not leaving the house. My dogs repulsed me. I could not look at them because I wanted to throw up. And that was hard. On me like I remember crying one night because I just I could not love them like at this point my dog Maddie had come back from training and that was like I was dying to see her and then finally when she got here was when the sickness was just the worst and I, I didn't even want to play with her I, I didn't even want to look at her and working out too like I still was doing it but I was struggling and I wasn't even doing it every day and I definitely like barely wanted to walk and that to me is also huge. Like I, it takes a lot for me not to work out. And just the fact that I didn't want to, I, I had no motivation to. So all those things that makes me feel who I am and who I, I, I know as this is Monica, I was not doing that. And I felt like an identity crisis was going on. Like part of me was just gone. And I 
I did it. Everyone kept telling me that it was going to pass. It was going to pass. But when you're going through it, and especially the first time, you really don't know what to think. Like, is it really going to pass? Or is this going to be the new me? I love coffee. I didn't want coffee. That was part of like, while I was trying to get pregnant, I was like, oh my God, with how much I love coffee, like this is going to be a huge struggle. I didn't even want it. So I could care less. People could have coffee around me. And I was like, Bleh. thankfully, I never threw up, which I was terrified of throwing up. So I never threw up, but the nausea was intense. And I remember just like sitting here smelling alcohol. Ugh, I just didn't want food. I just thought, wow, this is gonna be nine months of this. This is gonna be the longest nine months of my entire life. Finally, I called my doctor who happens to be my cousin. So that's a win. And um, it was a Saturday and he's just like, listen, get the unisom. This is gonna pass. You haven't even reached the peak of it yet. And I was like, what? He's like, no, it's about eight, nine weeks when you reach the peak of it. And I'm like, I'm like six weeks and he gave me that unison and that like not that it took it away but i was able to function a little bit better napping i was also constantly napping i had no energy to do anything which feeling bad and then not having energy that mix is not really the best i didn't know if i can do this like i was just like i don't know i mean at this point do i even want to be pregnant because it was so intense and then i felt bad for thinking that way but so many people were like this is totally normal. That made me feel a little bit better, but it seems so taboo like to be saying that and people there's like my, the older generation, like my mom and stuff like that would look at you like kind of like, you should be so happy. Then you hit second trimester and you feel amazing. You have energy, nausea is gone. You're able to eat. I'm able to work out my dogs. I, I can hug them and play with them and they do not repulse me. Shopping, back to being a shopaholic. Then comes more of the mental game of this and seeing your body go through changes that you not really prepared for. And this is Maddie. This is the golden doodle that was with me with my IUI. Especially that my entire life, I've been someone who has been about what your body looks like because of competitions and you know you've got to watch your weight you got to have the flat stomach and just seeing that my stomach wasn't flat had a little bulge it starts playing with you and then people telling you you've gotten wide oh you're not fat but you're wide that's not fun it really isn't fun and it's not really something that you want to hear then your clothes doesn't fit and even though you're growing something inside of you which is beautiful and sometimes i'm just in awe of the entire journey it doesn't mean that it still doesn't affect you mentally and there's going to be harder days and easier days like today for instance I'm okay with how I look. I have like a tight skirt on and my belly showing and I'm okay with it. There's some days that I'm just like, oh my God, I look like a damn whale. It's hard to see your body changing. And again, the older generation does not seem to understand this. And they only, and they're constantly telling you they want to see your belly, which I get it because when I had a friend that was pregnant, I would say, oh my God, your belly's so cute because I didn't mean it in like a bad way. But once you're in it, you're like, I get it now. So I'm sorry for all my friends that I would say like, oh my God, your belly's so huge. Back in my journey, when I was on Instagram and I would hear some woman complaining that she was pregnant and how fat she looked. And I was like, that is the most beautiful thing. Look at your belly, why are you complaining? You shouldn't be complaining. I would like get so mad at her. And I was like, I would never complain about my belly. That's so beautiful. And here we are. I think something that needs to be spoken more it does not mean that you don't love the baby that you're growing inside of you it does not mean that you're not happy about being a mom it does not mean any of those things it is just exactly what it is a struggle to see your body especially in today's era it doesn't make you less of a mom less of a person less of anything no matter what anyone says and if they do say that then they're stupid it's there and it's okay and absolutely normal to have and that's kind of what I, why I wanted to do this video because we go through so many emotions from the day, not even from the day you find out you're pregnant. In my case, from the moment that you want to be a mom, the emotions, it's just a roller coaster from that day, your body changing. And then once the baby comes and then 
it's just a constant constant thing we feel that we have to keep it all like hush hush and not speak out about it and because that'll make us a bad mom and i will speak out about it for all of us because i don't feel that that's that makes me a bad mom i think that does just makes it real and that is what mommyhood is my daughter's not here yet i can't say that i'm a mom yet something that we need to speak more about the mental health of this it goes on to postpartum that people will only care about seeing the baby and the mom is kind of pushed to the side when that is really when she needs sh the most care. Again, I have not been through that, but it is from experiences that I've heard of women because I work with women each every day. And that is what I've gathered is that through postpartum, once you have that baby, that is actually when the mom needs the most amount of support and nobody seems to care about her. Loving your baby and doing everything you can for your baby, but at the same time, taking care of yourself so that you can be the best version and, and show up for that baby is not bad. If you need to rest, get husbands involved. Hopefully you can have a support team or someone that can help you. And if you are a single mom, then I truly, truly feel for you. Contact me. Maybe, you know, we can help each other somehow. It's okay that during the newborn se you know, season, your husband takes up for half of it and you do half of it and you're not the, the only one doing it all. That's okay. And that's what I want to advocate. I can tell you that this journey has been a roller coaster of emotions. I just think that everyone's journey is different and it's okay. You can still have a beautiful, pregnancy and still have these feelings it doesn't mean that you're a bad person the problem is that on instagram and social media we're constantly looking at all these beautiful pregnant ladies and how amazing they are being a pregnant woman and being a mom and they're not really sharing how they truly feel so i want to be as open and real as possible today we went to go try strollers and car seats and that was overwhelming as hell i'm more confused now than when we got there i'm gonna end the video here and i will catch you in the next one bye